APIB, POTUS, and the NFL. All this and more on today's episode of the CEN. Welcome, welcome, welcome to This Week Today. I'm Neil A.M. Thank you so much for joining us. Living in the United States has its ups and downs, and whether you consider this an up or a down, we'll be talking about politics in this segment. Today we start with the 2024 election. The Republican nominee, former President Donald Trump, is running against Democratic nominee Vice President Kamala Harris. ABC hosted the first debate between these two candidates on Tuesday, September 10th. Here's a quick look. You will see during the course of his rallies, he talks about fictional characters like Hannibal Lecter. He will talk about windmills cause cancer. And what you will also notice is that people start leaving his rallies early out of exhaustion and boredom. People don't go to her rallies. There's no reason to go. And the people that do go, she's busing them in and paying them to be there and then showing them in a different light. So she can't talk about that. People don't leave my rallies. We have the biggest rallies, the most incredible rallies in the history of politics. Great stuff. Question topics included taxes, oil production, abortion, global wars, January 6th in Afghanistan. Answer topics included pets, crowd sizes, and former Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi. About 15 minutes after the debate, famous childless cat lady Taylor Swift endorsed Vice President Harris on social media. Next Sunday on Truth Social, Trump truthed, which is apparently a verb now, screaming, I hate Taylor Swift! In case you forgot, on July 13th last summer, during a rally in Pennsylvania, Trump was shot in an attempted assassination. Two weeks ago, on Sunday, Sunday, September 15th, the media covered reports of another attempted assassination of the former president. In case you missed it, the U.S. has a long history of electing vice presidents every four years. Following that tradition, this year, the governor of Minnesota, Tim Walz, is the Democratic vice presidential nominee, and the senator from Ohio, James David Vance, better known as J.D. Vance, is the Republican vice presidential nominee. Walls and Vans are scheduled to debate on CBS on Tuesday, October 1st. We'll talk about next week how that works out. This has been This Week Today for Today. I'll see you next week. Good day. Support Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Novi Deca this year is raising money for the Pink Sisters Incorporation. Last year, we raised about $2,800. This year, from September 30th to October 11th, pink ribbons will be sold during advisory for $1. And from October 8th to October 11th, pink shirts will be sold during all lunches. What's up, Novi? Are you taking an AP or IB exam? Register by October 18th and submit your payment by October 25th. The Novi boys varsity tennis team took on Norfolk at Norfolk. Unfortunately, they come up short. They look to bounce back. Boys varsity soccer also played Salem yesterday, where we came out 1-0. What up, Wildcats? Make sure to pop out to tonight's homecoming game as Novi football takes on Salem at 7 o'clock. Also, tune in to the halftime show to find out who you guys voted for as homecoming royalty. What's up, Novi? Welcome to the first episode of Cat's Eye Reviews. I'm Evan Marshall, and I will be reviewing the games. And today we are reviewing Warhammer Space Marine 2. I never really expected to play any of the Warhammer game, but with Space Marine 2, I just decided to jump in and give it a try. I'm the kind of guy that usually likes to play roguelike games like Risk of Rain 2, that's the only one I really play, and rhythm games like Beat Saber, though I'm not good, and A Dance of Fire and Ice, I love that game. I've heard of the Warhammer series, but I've never really paid any attention to it. Only thing I knew about is that there was a free game on mobile called Warhammer Freeblade, and that was cool. But I'm very glad I gave Space Marine 2 a chance because Oh my god! Is it incredible? I don't know anything about the story, yet the game just, it just took you along for a ride that you didn't know you wanted to go on. The combat in the game feels great. You feel like a truck just 
just going through everything because nothing is able to stop you until you just unless you just don't do anything and of course you're gonna die overall the game in my opinion is not really worth $60 I would be happy if I paid like $45 for it however there's supposed to be a content update like mid next year and that should be free and adds some content to the game that should hopefully make the game worth it then if you want to give it a try now I recommend it it's a wonderful experience if you do play it just try to take in everything and enjoy it you can play the game on pc if you have a good computer on ps5 and xbox series x thank you for watching see you later wildcats two years ago the cat's eye news made a story about a novi citizen who was in a predicament that most novi residents couldn't even imagine this man was detained in russia back in 2018 on espionage charges his name is paul whalen I'm standing here at the Portsmouth apartment complex, just about a 10 minute drive north of the high school. This apartment complex here used to belong to Paul Whalen, a 52 year old Novi resident currently serving a 16 year sentence in a Russian work camp on counts of espionage. The 54 year old former U.S. Marine worked in security for American companies and traveled to Russia frequently, and at the time of his arrest worked for a local automotive parts manufacturer called Borg Warner. While traveling to Russia to attend a friend's wedding, he was detained by Russia's FSB after being accused of spying. He has been trapped there ever since. However, fortunately the saga has come to a happy ending, because in early August this year, there was a high-profile prisoner swap which facilitated Whelan's release, after over 2,000 days trapped in Russian prison. He was among 16 individuals from a range of countries who were exchanged for 8 Russian prisoners, and what the BBC described as the biggest prisoner exchange between Russia and the West since the Cold War. Here is an interview that the CNN had with Whelan shortly after he landed in America. It, it didn't feel real until we were flying over England. I'm a British citizen, Irish citizen, Canadian, and American. So as we came over England and I looked down, um, you know, that's when it became real. We flew over Ireland, then Canada, and into America, and then I knew I was home. So getting off the plane, seeing the president, um, the vice president, that was nice. It was a good homecoming. So looking forward to seeing my family down here and just recuperating from five years, seven months, and five days of just absolute nonsense by the Russian government. Novi is happy to have you back, Paul. See you later, no bye. I'm Vanessa and I'm here with Mrs. Tobis. And what is your role here at Novi High School? I am a school counselor for students PAT through SN. And what is a hot take you have? Your grades do not predict your future. Your GPA is not who you are. Hi, my name is Vanessa McHale and I'm here with Mrs. Jones. Uh, and what subjects do you teach? I teach AP Environmental Science and Chemistry. And what's your unpopular opinion? Coffee is gross. Understood. What's up, Novi? We are here with our first NFL Sunday prediction. I'm here with Riese and Jimmy. Our first game is the Vikings at Packers. The Packers look really hot right now, but the Vikings are undefeated. I'm still going to give the Packers the edge at home. Well, I personally think the Vikings are going to win. Their defense is really good, and Sam Darnold is looking really good, too. And I hate the Packers anyway, so... Sam Darnold's been playing really well the first three weeks of the season, but in Lambeau, give me the Packers. Next game is the Steelers at Colts. The Colts have been not keeping up to pace with the expectations, and the Steelers are one of the best teams in the league right now, give me the Steelers. I'm going to be honest, I have Jonathan Taylor in my fantasy football team, and he's been cooking, so Colts. The Steelers are my favorite team, and I think TJ Watt's the best player in football, and I think that's going to be enough to give Anthony Richardson problems. Give me the Steelers. Next one is the Eagles at Buccaneers, and the Bucks just took a huge loss on Sunday, and the Eagles just barely beat the Saints. It's tough, but I'm going to go with the Eagles. It's going to be a tough game, though. The Buccaneers game was very disappointing. I don't know how Denver won that game, but I'm going to take the Eagles, even though they're, they, they kind of suck, too. Um, you know, I think this is going to be a really close game. I think these two teams are pretty evenly matched, uh, rematched from the playoffs last year. Give me the Bucks at home. Next game is the Chiefs at Chargers, and again, the Chargers took a big loss on Sunday, and the Chiefs are still the best team in the league right now. I think they're going to keep this rolling and go 4-0. Give me the Chiefs. Uh, I'm going to say the Chiefs, too, because, you know, Matt said they're the best team, and Mahomes could do anything he wants. Move for the Chargers in this one. Love Jim Harbaugh, but the Chiefs always find a way. Give me the Chiefs. All right, next up is the Bills at Ravens, and the Ravens the Ravens are doing okay right now. I think they will be fine, but the Bills, again, they're, they're just showing up when they need to. Give me the Bills. I'm going to say, though, Ravens almost lost against the Cowboys, and it was, it was an ugly game, so I'm going to take the Bills. Yeah, the Ravens have been playing everybody close, but they've kind of struggled. Uh, give me the Bills and Josh Allen to pull out another close one. 
final game is Seahawks at Lions. Lions have been rolling ever since that loss of the Buccaneers. They pull it out of Arizona, and I think they can definitely pull it out of the Seahawks. Give me the Lions. Hey, the Lions are the best team in the NFL. We're going to win the Super Bowl, taking the Lions. Yeah, we're probably wearing the black jerseys for the first time um, on Monday Night Football. Give me the Lions. Jameer Gibbs is going to have a big game. That concludes our first NFL Sunday predictions. Stay tuned for more coverage. What's up, Wildcats? Do you want your story featured on the Cat's Eye News? Email us at nhscatseyenews at gmail.com. Thank you for watching today's episode of the Cat's Eye News. Remember, the pep rally is today after 6th hour, the homecoming parade is at 5, and the football game is at 7. Have a great homecoming, Wildcats.